Hey, this is Mark Moore, aka Tuxedo Mark, in various places on the internet. It's 10.35 a.m. according to a computer clock on Tuesday, no November 25th, 2014. And uh, here are my thoughts on Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon Crystal, Episode 10, Moon, or Tsuki Moon, or Moon Moon, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's weird that... The manga titles, at least in the original English translation of the manga that I have, um, they have like, you know, one word titles, but the uh, episodes have like two word titles uh, or two part titles. Um, anyway, sorry that this is a bit late. I haven't had a, an opportunity to record, but. Uh, Okay, so, what I think? I, it was another great episode. It stayed very true to the manga. Again, like 90-something percent accurate to the manga. Um, beautifully animated. It, it's very gorgeous. And, um, okay, I'm going to go through some of the changes. First of all, okay, first I want to mention something. The uh, part where Usagi's dad gives her back the uh, silver crystal that he she had given it to him to have a chain put on it so she could wear it as a necklace. Okay, that part is in the manga, all right? Um, now, I never realized until I watched Aurora Peachy's reaction that, yeah, okay, Usagi gave him the silver crystal. She gave her dad this all-powerful object I was like, hey, can you put this on a uh, chain for me? Okay. Uh, that, that's kind of a dumb move, but I, I guess that's, that's Usagi. <laughs> um, what else? Early in the episode, when uh, Usagi and Shingo are playing a video game, okay, in the, in the episode, they're just they're playing some unseen video game on a handheld device. I don't know, maybe it was like a Nintendo 3DS or something, who knows. Um, in the original, in the manga, uh, they're playing Street Fighter 2. And Usagi specifically mentions that she's playing as Chun-Li. Yeah, that, that's awesome. It, it's too bad that they couldn't put something like that, like an equivalent, into the uh, episode, but I guess, you know, rights issues or whatever. They could have been playing, like, you know, Ultra S Street Fighter 4 or whatever the latest version is. Um, anyway, so, th so they go to the moon. It's still not clear what exactly a loon is doing to send them to the moon, but it, it's... Okay, anyway, so they go to the moon. Everything's really nice. Um, Queen Serenity has white hair in that holographic projection. So now I'm wondering the, the the change in the opening theme where they change the hair color from blonde to white. I mean Princess Serenity has blonde hair in the episodes that that's not different. So what I'm wondering is if they changed who that character is in the opening theme from Princess Serenity to Queen Serenity to her mom. Thoughts? I don't know. Anyway. But it looks like when uh, when the episodes finally come on DVD in North America that, you know, that's what we're gonna get. We're gonna the we're gonna get the white haired girl in the opening credits. Um, I, I really, I, I, I don't feel too good about them updating the episodes right after they've aired for the DVD and Blu-ray release. I mean, I like them to be preserved as they originally aired. Anyway. So, what else? Um, 
Oh, okay. So, initially, uh, Coonside was the only one, obviously uh, the only general left still alive, that walked in on Queen Beryl and Queen Metalia. And Beryl brainwashed him, and he, you know, let the, he attacked the city, and, um, so Usagi fights him. Now, it's all four generals, because they're all still alive, and they start to get their memories back, and there's a new scene where they remember being in, uh, being, you know, the court of, uh, Prince and Dimi. and, uh, it's very nice. Now all four of them get brainwashed by Queen Beryl. And they all go out and launch the attack. So that... <coughs> so that Inner Senshi are fighting them. It's a much bigger battle, obviously. <laughs> and then Usagi goes out into space. It's like she flies out into space. I'm not sure if that's present in the manga or not. It's, uh, it's like, what? But yeah, Usagi can just fly out into space. And they, and, you know, they, they can go to the moon, and they can be in space where there's no oxygen. Okay, it, it's like that in the manga, too. They go to the moon without comment. Magic? I, I, I don't know, but uh, Usagi does moon healing escalation on the entire city, and then just when you think that they're going to uh, awaken the generals and deep brainwash them, that you think Usagi's going to succeed, they're like, nope, see you next time, and they leave. Err. So close. So at the end of the episode, Endymion is revived inside this chamber or whatever in the Dark Kingdom, and Beryl's kind of being flirty with him, I guess. She's sending him to Earth. She's like, go find the princess, get the silver crystal, and um, so it's like, Endymion is, uh, or, you know, Mamoru is being sent to Earth, and he shows up walking on the streets of Tokyo, and that, that's how it ends. Not exactly a cliffhanger, but yeah, it is a cliffhanger, let's face it. Um, so yeah, I look forward to the uh, next episode. Three episodes left of the Dark Kingdom story arc. Two and a half, really, I suppose, if you're going to strictly follow the manga. Um, yeah, I, I look forward to seeing what happens. Um, I read the manga a long time ago when I first got, uh, when I first got it, but uh, I don't remember what happened, so I've been reading each chapter of the manga right before watching the equivalent episode of the anime. So I'm not being totally surprised by the anime, but I'm being surprised on the day so that I watch it. So uh, and even still, the anime manages to surprise me a bit by you know stuff that it adds in and changes. It, it was a great idea keeping the four generals alive. Um, you know, Jadeite, um, Nephrite, and. Um, Zoicide. Uh, this is a lot better. <laughs> you're like, now you're like, oh my god, what's gonna happen? <sighs> anyway, uh, that, that, that's it. That's all I wanted to share for right now. So it's 10.45am and thanks for watching.